Well, thank you. Um, OK, so actually, uh, today I'm talking about randomized. <coughs> randomized 3D algorithms for matching. First, a little history, and so that's not the history of the universe, but that's the history of the universe for us when we are focusing on this little subject, and those who focus on it actually really enjoy it. Um, so um, first, although I am not going to talk about weighted, the weighted version, so the weighted matching, but I just want to mention the, like a basic result which says that um, so actually it's due to Corte and, um, and Hammon, Ham uh, yeah, no, 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 uh, Hausmann, that um, that the randomized greedy algorithm in the weighted version, actually there is no, r okay, so no randomization necessary. Um, we just simply, um, so you have a graph, the input is a graph, and you have a weight function from the edges. Uh, and so then of course you ca we can order the edges according to their weights. And so the greedy algorithm would be simply uh, take the first edge um, and then, well, of course, that if we want to construct a matching, if we take this edge that rules out a lot of other edges because like, for instance, this is your graph. So if, if you took the first edge, this was the first edge, then of course, we have to eliminate these two points with all the incident edges from the graph. So we get a graph like this. And, and let's say that ruled out a, E2 and E3. So the next one would be with the largest weight would be E4. And so if we take this out, um, then we just get two isolated nodes, so, so actually that's the end of it. So uh, we finish. So in the greedy algorithm, uh, for the matching, we take edges in a certain order, whether let it be randomized or according to some uh, ordering. And then um, the only thing we care about is that um, the collection of edges so far is always a matching. OK, so what the result of, um, of, uh, Cort of Corte and, and Hausmann, uh, which I guess it's in the other way around, says that the approximation ratio of, the, of this greedy algorithm is at least half, meaning that if there is a matching of size L, then this algorithm always finds a matching of size L over 2. Now, um, OK, so I accidentally said randomized, which was not true. So here, uh, if, if this is a strict ordering, then of course there is no randomization place. But if it is not a strict ordering, then like there are equal signs with a choice, like which edge to choose. And then um, randomization plays a role. In particular, 
and that uh, is going to be our uh, concern today, is the unweighted case. So, so in the unweighted case, um, well, of course, all the weights are equal. So then, actually, randomization plays a big role, like how, in what order, we pick the edges. So, um, um, so the um, the plain vanilla greedy, uh, the, the plain vanilla randomized greedy algorithm for matching would be that the, that the way that we have just a uniform distribution on the edges. And so we just pick a random edge, we, we do this simplification, we pick an, uh, another random edge, and so forth. So um, in the unweighted case, the, the uniform uh, distribution um, would not give us a better approximation ratio, significantly better approximation ratio than half. So. Yeah, exactly. I will talk about that because so half is <coughs> kind of trivial. Like in the weighted case, maybe it's less trivial. I don't look at this. Right? It's less trivial. It's a more general result, and that's just a, a corollary of a more general result. But it's pretty much trivial, and this half is basically it's always trivial. And there is a reason for actually the reason for that is that no matter like how you choose these edges. Like, in the end, there is not going to be any edge in the graph whose one endpoint, at least, is not covered by the, edge, by the matching you have constructed. So then, obviously, if you have a matching of size L, then, um, then uh, the matching you construct will have size at least an L over 2. OK, so, but, um, so in the weighted case, I just want to mention a couple of results. Um, so uh, uh, people have been looking at different models. So in model one, um, so it's everything is, is random as before, except when you see a vertex with degree one, then you just pick that vertex. And Actually, I think you just can pick any. And in this model, um, which was due to, I think, CARP and Sipser, um, so it just pick edge whose one endpoint has degree 1. And just pick randomly otherwise. So actually, it performs very well on random graphs. So on random graphs, uh, it finds a matching of size, uh, which is, I think, n to the 1 fifth plus little order of 1. Um, I actually, I just took it, um, this. Uh, granted from uh, uh, my quarter. Um, this formula looks a little <laughs> suspicious to me, but in any case, so that's so that's so 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 that's an so that's an additive error. So it makes so it makes this additive error. Error. I mean, order of this on on random on random graphs. Now, what, what 
Well, on Erdős-Rényi random graphs. So ev every edge is picked with probability c over n. And um, so, so one thing you need to know is that, that for random graphs, or actually for balanced graphs, so for, for regular graphs, you always have a maximum, you always have a matching of size n over 2. So the other model, yeah, optimal minus this amount. Well, the optimum is essentially, well, not exactly, because it's a random graph, but so it's, it's half n, basically. So the model 2 is very similar. Uh, the original algorithm, um, so I don't know, but I think it does not do it does not do well because when it comes to the moment of truth, which is when you already when the size is already reduced, and there there will be a lot of vertices with degree one because then as you take out edges, the graph starts to become unbalanced then it will not notice those vertices with degree 1. So it will just match the other endpoints, and then it just squanders those, those vertices. So, um, so I don't think it will have a good performance, but that's, that's actually that's pr that was probably analyzed. I, I apologize. I don't know. Um, so, so in the model 2, uh, we pick. We pick the so we pick a, a vertex with with uh, with minimum with minimum degree. So as the graph gets reduced, so at every step we pick a vertex with minimum degree in the current graph. And so, and then just just pick a random edge out of it, and then that's we select into the matching. So, uh, and select into the matching. So that, again, that performs well on random graphs. Actually, on random cubic graphs, I am sorry. So actually, I was correct that he asked for the random model, because it's because random cubic graphs, so uh, they are not really ran erdős rényi random graphs in terms of like you just can't uh, pick, I mean, the edges are not independently in the graph. Uh, 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 performs well on random cubic graphs. Sorry? Uh, here in this algorithm? In the, last in the last two. So that I don't know because I did not look at this literature. So I just took the um, them from my quarter. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Where? In the first case, the uh, you mean in the first model? The first model. Yes. Yes, in model one. I mean that's actually that's model. I mean there is the plane. There is the plane greedy, which is model zero, right? So the in the model one, indeed, you are right. But on random graphs, and that's very important, because 
Today, I am going to talk about arbitrary graphs. So that's going to be our big concern, that how the algorithm performs on arbitrary graphs. And so all these are on random graphs. And there is a lot of analysis on like how these greedy matchings perform on random graphs. There is lesser analysis how they perform on arbitrary graphs. Well, on balanced graphs. I think balanced, but I mean, but it has to be recursively balanced, so maybe it's some structure. Uh, but so, um, OK, I, I think I, di I did it in the wrong order, I guess. But um, OK, so let me just. Um, let me just delete this, and then I will go on in the middle. OK, so finally, we, arri we have arrived at the model I want to talk about. So this model is that of, um, so that's model three, and maybe I should just say it, so the modified randomized greedy. And so this is due to Aaron's on, not Scott, it's just one A. Aaron's on Dyer, Freeze, and, uh, and um, um, Suen. Sorry? <laughs> Did I misspell it? Sorry. Uh, Thank you, Suan. Uh, uh, OK, so this is the model now. So modified refers to that, as opposed to just having a uniform distribution of edges and which is pick a random edge, we do the following. That, so first, pick a random node. node, and then pick a random edge out of this node. And so it's just repeat. Well, so actually, either or, because if you bump into a degree one vertex, then there is no edge out. So at this stage, you just discover it, and you just no, discard it. Well, yeah, I would just discard it. So OK, so, uh, okay, so we eliminate, all, yeah, after every step, we eliminate all degree one vertices. Uh, thank you very much. So that's. Actually, it's very good to think about it this way. That um, so, um, so I want to give you an example before go on. So now, this modified was in order to get around uh, this half, this one half barrier, this one half performance ratio barrier. Uh, why? No, they are favoring edges with low degree. Because we pick a random node, like, OK, so in this example, I will, so OK, so here is the, so example, example, the bomb graph. So 
So the bomb graph is, well, it's a clique of, let's say, size n. So now the graph will have 2n, edge, two n nodes. And so for every, for every, so this is kn, and so for every node, there is um, like an edge <coughs> going out, it connected to a degree one vertex. So for this graph, so let's see how this, the, the randomized, uh, which, uh, which is called MRG, So let's see how MRG performs on this graph. So, um, well, what you need to notice is that, uh, like after every iteration of steps one and two, you get you uh, get a graph like this with a smaller parameter. However, yeah. No, 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 the degree zero vertex. I am sorry, the degree zero vertex. Ah, so, so you don't do anything special with the degree no, one. I don't do anything special with degree one. Okay. So, with the degree zero, yeah, I apologize. I, so I, I man. Yeah. Well, in model two is the minimal degree, and there, well, the model one somehow to me does not make extraordinary sense because like why would we you know why would we make special uh, take special care of degree 1 and not degree 2 however notice that um, yeah in a sense it's more general but okay so but let's not let's not get stuck with these because really this I don't have much information about these and moreover this is the model we are going to study. So just, um, just that's what we need to understand, these two steps, that we pick a random node, and then we pick a random edge out of it, and then we eliminate these two vertices, and in the remaining graph, we just delete all isolated nodes, and then we just repeat the process. So when we do that, then there are two possibilities. Well, either the node we picked was degree one, or it was in the, in the center of the bomb. So it was uh, like large degree. Now, what happens in both cases? So if, if we eliminated a node like, I mean, if we picked a node like this, then what the other node, what is killed, so I say selected and this was killed, um, then uh, I guess today is a very aggressive talk because <laughs> you know first the bomb and then you know we kill the actually um, uh, these authors used two other words two other expressions for this and this but I learned it later actually liked it better but um <coughs> so so when we select one and this kills this one then the then we get another bomb, which is one smaller. So then, then, well, if degree one node is selected, then the bomb, then the size of the bomb reduces to from n to n plus n minus one. And if degree two, uh, if degree whatever uh, actually it's like n node is selected, then the n reduces to n minus two, because what happens is, well, with, very, with very large probability, with, uh, I should say, with very large probability because what happens is that we pick a node in the center then the a random edge would likely to connect it with the center and so we eliminate two center nodes but that makes two outer nodes isolated so 
the, it, this edge actually eliminates four, four vertices, and so we get a bomb like Kn minus 2. So these are the two possibilities, and since we have as many center nodes, as many outer nodes, then um, the probability of this event is the same as the probability of this event. So now if we are looking at uh, the sequence of whether this happens or this happens, that we just see a sort of a random sequence of like ones and twos. And so that gets us down. So either one, either it decreases by one or by two, and so that gets us down to zero. Which means that so we had like, let's say, L1s and L2s, well, roughly speaking. Um, so what we have is that 3L would be N. So L would be N over 3. And, um, and the number of edges we selected was like the number of ones plus the number of twos. So this sequence, so the length of this sequence, which is like t twice L. So it's, so it's like uh, the matching we have created. Uh, so the cons constructed matching well on expectation um, have size um, well 2L which is um, well again it's right so which is 2N over 3 but the actually, I mean, this graph, and so recall that it has two n nodes rather than n nodes. So 2n over 3 is a factor of two thirds smaller than the actual matching, uh, the actual matching size. So because it has a perfect matching, namely these, uh, these ray edges. So, so, the, so the performance of MRG on the bomb graph is two-third. And apparently, no one knows a better counterexample than this. So it could be two-third. However, what Aronson, on Dyer, Fries, and Suen proved is Uh, maybe I don't want, <laughs> but maybe I want to. <laughs> I can always go back, I just, you know. Uh, so it is, uh, so that the uh, p uh, performance ratio is greater or equal than half, which is the trivial plus uh, one over 400,000. So now it's just a little bit better than half. So what, so what I am proving with um, uh, Matthias Poloshek, so uh, uh, is that the performance ratio is greater than half plus 1 over 256. But, you know, besides this improvement, why I wanted to talk about this is because it also, um, so our argument actually gives a lot of new information about randomized matchings. I mean, the, about this algorithm and, um, so how to view it, what kind of statements we can uh, say. So, um, 
so as I said, the um, and actually Avi pointed out to it that the that the trivial is half, and for the reason that so let's assume this is the maximum matching. So as the algorithm goes, well, until it sees an edge, it would it would like pick at least some edge. So in the end, it won't see any edge, uh, which means that from every edge, at least one endpoint was matched. And so uh, in the first case, what we would see is that the, ma uh, the matching we constructed, so which I will always call M, as opposed to the optimal matching, so there's the optimal. Um, so that that were half, but if this was the case, we would see like these passes of length three, and then the uh, proof of ADFS somehow uh, then tried to get a contradiction or I improve a little bit, saying that if there were like if all these passes were of length three or or most of them, then you know, then it, so the algorithm just couldn't perform that way. And so they could just get a little leverage and improve it on it a little bit. So they were, their focus was passes of length three. Now our focus is going to be just a single edge. So we are just going to focus on a single edge of the graph. Um, and, um, so I guess, OK, so make a mental picture of this slide. Um, You mean of uh, the edge of pass of the pass of length three, which is like a little bomb. Well, it is a little bomb. It's a very little <laughs> bomb, but it is. But I mean, you. Uh, but um, it is better than actually. It is better than two thirds, as a matter of fact. So as n goes to infinity, then the bomb has performance two thirds. But if you look at a fixed size bomb, then the performance is a little better. I mean, we can, we can compute. I mean, it's a, it's a little exercise. Uh, OK, so. Yes. Uh, is it always two thirds? Not necessarily. For instance, if it's just a matching, so G is the empty graph. Sorry? Okay, so is this obvious? Probably it's obvious because you are always, I mean, you always have at least 50% chance of matching these nodes. And so, indeed, so it's always, of course, that's a very ideal situation. So typically, we want to look at arbitrary graphs. Um, OK, so but now we are just going to focus on a, on a single edge. And um, so consider the following two quantities, which is, well, uh, the probability that, and, and now I'm just focusing on a single vertex just to, just to be even more basic. So there are two possibilities that either 
well, there are actually three possibilities, that either this vertex during the algorithm is selected as a first endpoint, meaning it's selected, and the probability of that I just uh, denote by SV, so that's the probability that V is selected. Now it's either or it's, it's killed, meaning that another point was selected and then this just has an edge here, that's this edge we selected into the matching and so that killed this vertex, so that's the probability kv that v is killed. And of course the third possibility is that it just remains isolated. So notice that the matching, the expected size of matching that you construct is equal to the sum of S V, um, uh, so V in V G, which is equal to the sum of K V, uh, V in V G. And so that's obvious because, you know, whenever we select an edge, so that's that we put into the matching. So the total probability is the expected number of matchings, the expected number of edges we selected into the matching, which is the expected size of the matching. And so the same with K, because, you know, the, it is just looking at it from the other end point. Um, so, um, now if we are looking at the, the actual perfect matching in the graph, by the way, you are asking, okay, so what if the graph does not have a perfect matching? But actually there is a monotonicity theorem, which I am just going to talk momentarily, uh, and that shows that, in particular, it's enough to look at when a graph when the graph do does have a perfect matching, it's not so crucial for us, but the argument with which leads to that is actually e it, it, it is. Um, but, okay, so for, for now, let me just assume that the graph has a perfect matching, and uh, I will spare a sentence on it later. So, so now if I am looking at the S values for these, well, okay, so SV plus, plus KV, so this is the probability that this node is going to be covered in the end by, from either endpoint, and this is the probability that the other uh, endpoint is going to be covered. Now if the situation is that the matching we construct has size, um, well, okay, so now I assume that the number of nodes is n, right? So this has n over two edges. So, um, so if, um, so if the, if the algorithm works such that that um, that um, it just it it produces like n over four edges. So let's assume that m equals n over four. So that would imply, roughly speaking, that for a typical edge it would be that the SV plus KV plus SW plus KW is, is actually a half. Because, oh, I'm sorry, is one. Is one, because 
Because so that would mean, sorry. No, it's not in the overall. So it's overall, it's selected. So what is the probability that V is selected at some point? So in the final matching, V is an endpoint. And well, actually, so this is that in the final matching, V is an endpoint. And when it was selected, then it was selected uh, from the V side and not from the other side. And KV is that so so here of course like the both endpoints well in the end of the day well one of them will be covered and covered I mean that it's either selected or killed so either of the one of the endpoints will covered but um, so this means that the sum of these is at least one and um, and if the algorithm runs pessimistically, that is, produces a matching of half size, it means that exactly one endpoint will be covered. So that's going to be exactly one. I mean, for a typical edge VW in this matching. So that's what this means, that if m is n over 2, then this is, roughly speaking, 1. Typically, n over, n over if m is n, m over 4. Um, I am running out of the white chalk. And maybe, actually, there is some. Uh, so if I knew this, I would have written with nicer characters because I mean, I know it's ugly writing, but it's part of it is due to the chalk, I should say. <laughs> um, well, we can test it now. Uh, so, um, so that's the typical case. But now, um, so everything that is over this is our gain. And so if we could prove, so, now, if we just want to go beyond half, then, then if we could, I guess it's not the chalk, <laughs> prove that, uh, that SV plus, S plus SW plus KV plus KW is <coughs> Is, 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 is 1 plus omega of 1, well, typically, then we would be done. I am fixing an arbitrary perfect matching. But, but, but uh, the argument I am going to present in the next 14 minutes is such that um, I am just looking at any edge in the graph, and I am just going to make a claim about the s and v values about any edge. Um, so. I guess, um, yeah, I could use the side boards. Maybe I am using these boards. Um, so, um, so, okay, so let me, um, let me make the claim before it's the end of the day. Um, And um, so I claim that, so lemma, um, I see I should have said one more definition, which is that for an edge, 
And so that's important that for an edge, E, let B E is by definition the probability that both endpoints are covered. So B is the probability that both endpoints are covered. So actually this B E is the excess over, over one. Because it cannot be that none of the endpoints are covered. So the BE is exactly uh, this quantity minus 1. So now here is the lemma which says that for every edge E, um, the B E is greater or equal than S V uh, E equals V W. The B E is greater or equal than S V squared over 8. So if you have that, then actually um, already uh, I mean, even with clumsy mathematics, we get something over half. Because, um, so if you look at now any matching, any, optimu any optimal matching, um, well, we know that the sum of SV, just by the trivial argument, is at least n over 4, which means that typical, well, at least order, uh, omega n times. So, so that means that SV is omega 1 at least omega n times. So which means that BV, BE, so now here I am, so V is just a generic point, actually it does not matter which endpoint of the, but it implies that BE is omega 1 at least omega n times, and so, um, and so that implies that the sum of B E for E in, okay, so now let's call the optimal matching opt. So E equals opt is omega n. And so that means that um, it's like n over 4 plus some other constant times n. Yeah, then the, all of them are one quarter. So if we do a little better mathematics, we even see better. Yeah, Cauchy Schwarz, uh, that's the same, yeah. So, and of course, that's what we do. And, um, and so that's, that's now, why is it true? And so I have nine minutes, but I want to talk, but the intuition is very simple. So the intuition is this, that, so now again, I am just, so I want to prove the lemma, and so I am focusing this edge E, which is VW. And so here is the time. So let's see where, I mean, either V or W were selected, perhaps both. Actually, during the process, um, so I say that a node dies uh, if either either uh, 
gets selected or killed or gets isolated. So let's look at the um, so let's look at in this time scale when V dies and when W dies. So but I so but the observation is that so what does it mean that SV is let's say omega of one? That means that when V dies it's somewhere in the middle. So um, but but I am gonna sort of show, although not directly this way, that the only way that B E could be really small, so that if not that if the probability that both endpoints um, are covered is is close to zero, so that only hap only can happen if both nodes die very early. So typically, so again, that's the typical, that's, that's going to be the typical situation. So this is the picture typically if B is big. And I want to claim that otherwise B has to be some, some constant. And so why? Because so if, B, if V uh, does not die immediately, Well, then, um, then um, so if it li lives long, then well, then W also well, if it if it dies immediately. Um, then uh, um, Okay, so first, first look at the case when it's sort of, so V dies in the middle, and let's assume that W uh, survives V, and then it dies somewhere like along the line, like somewhere like much later. When, but if it died much later, then, well, it, it had like a long time when it, could, when it could be selected. Because the problem is if, you know, if V is selected, then we already have one endpoint. So if W is selected, then we have the other endpoint. So now if we are going for the probability that only one, end, one point is selected, so that B is like nearly zero, then, then well, then W shouldn't be selected. But if v W survives long, then it has a constant probability that it's like after this selected, then W is selected, so then um, then, uh, then B is a constant. So that's not possible. So, so if V survives long, then, um, well, then somehow W has to become isolated just shortly after that. So for some reason, W has to get isolated shortly after that. And so the same is true for V. So actually the, the picture should look like, should certainly look like this, that both have to be close to each other. Now, the only thing I have to argue is that they are both close to each other, so, um, but they are not here in the beginning. So 
so if S V so if S V is a constant, um, this means that V was selected as a first endpoint. Now in the process, we are um, you know, selecting a node and then selecting another node and so forth. Uh, so every so in the first step, every node has one over n chance of being selected. Like in the first two steps, like every node has at most like two over n chance of being selected and so forth. So in the first case, steps k over n. All right. So if the if the point uh, dies in the in No, but SV just means that it's selected. So KV means that it's killed, right? So that's why. So if SV is large, that's what I'm. That's I said that then it should be somewhere in the middle. For most rounds. Probably. For most rounds, so it's the picture should roughly look like that. Okay, so but so so that so that's so that could be the killer for us. So that's the only bad case when somehow when V dies, so V is selected, then all of a sudden like W gets isolated. Because again, if it does not, like if it survives for long, so actually that goes in the other way around, that if we know that a node survives for long, then like typically, then for that long time, it might as well get selected because, you know, ev every survival, every surviving node has equal probability of getting selected. So somehow, long survival and S, the S values, come hand in hand. So, so why is it that when V, so can it be? that when V is selected, then somehow W miraculously gets isolated. And so for this, um, uh, we need another, yet another important lemma, uh, which helps us to prove that lemma. And so that's the other lemma, which again, it's perfectly understandable on its own right. So we need something that relates the, like the S and V values of a graph and the S and, I mean the S and K values of a graph and the S and K values of, of another graph which is like arises from the original graph when we slightly change the graph, like leaving out a node, for instance. So we need such a lemma. And so this is what we call a contrast lemma, and, and that's, and so, so um, here is our lemma. Um, Okay, so let u, x1, and so on, xk be vertices in Vg. So now I want to relate the, the um, k and s values of Vg. And so you can think of k as a constant, by the way, but it's not necessary. Uh, we want to relate that to the k and s values of g minus x1 and so on, xk. So that, by definition, is the graph, although it's a sloppy notation, but that's the graph uh, that obtained Uh, it's the different k from what? OK, I can call it anyhow. I can call it as the same k, so I can call it L. 
is the same, so that's the same. So is by definition the graph obtained by deleting nodes uh, x1, xl from g. So now we, we say that the probability that u is covered for g and that u is covered is just the s u plus k u. I just said it that way because we should, we should uh, uh, index it by g. So actually this, let's call it g prime. Uh, I'm sorry. So actually, it's for for g prime. So this is the probability. So that a node is covered in g prime, we can we can underestimate it from that the node that the, this node is covered by g, namely one over l plus one times the probability that uh, u is covered in g, so, but we have to subtract from it the sum that actually that the probabilities that, um, well, u xi that this edge is selected into M, well, for G, where like U, Xi is an edge in G. So if it's not, so here is U, and here is X1, and so on, Xk, and for those, that are edges, uh, that if u x i is an edge, then we have to subtract from the coverage probability of u in G uh, the probability that this particular edge covered u, so the sum of all these. So if we create that, that's a lower bound, and so we can lower bound the probability that u is covered for G prime. So why is it good for us? Because it shows, and well, you need a little calculation, a little mathematics, that when V dies by being covered by a node, and if we leave out that edge, then in the remaining graph, W is not going to be isolated because of this lemma. It's going to be covered with a good probability. So if if we do so, um, and we go through a little calculation, then we just get this lemma, which then gives us the um, half plus 1 over 256. So we see this as the fundamental lemma, which relates the s and v, the s and k values of different graphs. Because without that, somehow, we just can't make a working proof. And then there is a very simple corollary, which then gives a big improvement on the previous result. And we did not even try to optimize that. We optimized the simplicity of the proof rather than the, the constant. Uh, so thank you very much. This uh, was it. So you are modifying the algorithm. Um, so
So you are even more, you are favoring lower degree nodes even more. Because this already favors lower degree nodes by the virtue of, you know, just all nodes are equal. Um, so, um, so there is another algorithm that we considered where actually we use the same ordering for the um, second endpoint as for the first endpoint, meaning that we just have one permutation of all nodes, and so this gives an order of all nodes, and we pick the first endpoint according to that order, and then we pick the second endpoint according to the same order, and that's actually that performs better, although we can't prove that. Uh, Exactly. So that's the CARP, uh, yeah, CARP Vazirani Vazirani algorithm. So what do you know about the Well, it's just half plus epsilon with a very small constant. But that's actually, that's a much, so we, again, we use the same analysis up to here. I mean, but that's a more complicated analysis because there is more independencies because, you know, the, there is less randomness in it. Well, actually, the, the, the worst case could be as good as 0 0.72. As a matter of fact, for the bomb graph, uh, it, it is 0 0.75 as opposed to 0 0.66, which is two-thirds. But then, strangely enough, and for a long time, it seemed that three-quarter was a natural bound, but then we found other graphs where it was worse, but still no worse on any graph than 0 0.72. So that's actually, that's a much better randomized algorithm. I mean, at least it on in experimentally. Well, it's for the bipartite version. So for the bipartite version, it's the analysis is much simpler. Is there any way to say that no randomized the algorithm, whatever that means, can perform better than 0.99? So, uh, so get, because um, uh, Matthias is a, a student of Georg Schnitger, and Georg tried to uh, define what a greedy algorithm is. So I, um, I don't know where he's standing now. I didn't want to go into that, but, um, but they have some notion. I don't think that they proved anything like that, but it would be interesting. But the first challenge is indeed to, to make a good definition, which I think Georg has done. Uh, yeah, of course, then, then, um, then there is no random, of course, you can consider the random version of that, right, otherwise. Um, but then if you, you know, then it's just too general if you also consider the random version. Of, uh, you mean that the order of edges, so that's, that's funny, you know, because then, you know, so does it depend on the graph or it does not depend on the graph? Because if it depends on the graph, then like basically you can just take any matching algorithm and say that that's the order in which I am considering the edges. So you have, so the order has to be something simple. Like for instance, it's the, whatever the degrees, you just look at the degrees or just a random order or something like that. I think, I, I, I don't know, but. Yeah, you want to prevent I, the order. yeah, so you want to prevent funny orders. Like if, like an, a very clever magician gives you a good order, then of course you can just, you can just do the actual matching.
So by deleting, you mean that you are just so you are just simply omitting those nodes. Well, you are very generous. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe it works if you don't omit too many of them. But let's say the graph is balanced, then you you don't omit anything, or you still omit something. I mean, yeah, it's, it's balanced, or or you keep omitting vertices, like for instance, for the bomb. Or you omit edges. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for, for spanning trees rather than spanning trees, there are these mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I understand. So you omit edges. Yeah, that's, that's, that could probably make sense. Although the thing is that, that, these, gre that these greedy algorithms, um, like so for very sparse graphs, even for graphs of degree 3, um, I mean, these randomized greedy, they still don't perform all that well. So you may omit like zillions of edges, and then you still get down to the situation which is not terribly good. So like I don't see like after, um, I mean, how can you be like widely successful by omitting edges? I mean, you can be maybe somewhat successful. Um, but so let's say, so even if, even if on, from the bomb graph, well, obviously, you would tend to omit all the, you know, the center edges. But like after you omit it, like a lot of center edges, and every node will have degree only 10, then you still, unless you do something clever now, you will still around two third. You will be still around two third. And then it's already, you know, the degrees are already more similar, so it's not clear, like, what to omit next. I mean, but, but probably there, o there is a dual, though. I mean, it just, I am doubting that it performs, like, absolutely, like, superb, as opposed to the primal. So then you would, so then you would have a greedy algorithm for edge cover, for like randomized greedy algorithm for edge cover. It would be interesting to see like how you know randomized greedy algorithm for matching and randomized greedy algorithm for whether there is a gap or. Uh, 